Hello and welcome to Access, my name's Nathan and this week I was lucky enough to be one of the first people to play The Last of Us Part 2. Two sections of the game were included in our hands-on session, one from relatively early in the story where Ellie patrols around the survivor settlement in Jackson and a section a little later on with Ellie on the outskirts of Seattle. The footage you'll see throughout this video is from those two sections. The story has been the focus of a lot of what we've seen about the game so far, but a huge amount of work has gone into the gameplay too. This is both subtle and interconnected. Combat initially feels familiar, like an evolved form of the gameplay you know from the first game, but several key changes have moved it on considerably. Here's a look at some of those changes. Number one, environments are bigger. The spaces I explored often comprised of several houses, shops or other buildings, often with multiple floors, often completely optional in terms of progression and often featuring hidden or hard to get to areas with deeper story information or resources. The effect is that the game feels a little more realistic and the redesigned combat encounters have more space in which to play out. <laughs> Number two, Ellie has a few new ways to explore and interact with these bigger environments. Naughty Dog has shaped the gameplay around her character, older and stronger than when we first met her, but still agile and relatively small. Ellie can squeeze through gaps in the environment and she can also jump, a much commented on omission from the first game, which leads to various traversal options and an added verticality to combat. And Ellie can also go prone. This one probably has the most impact while you're actually playing. It means that you can find cover even in open areas with long grass and that you can shuffle discreetly between two points of larger cover it's also a great example of how Naughty Dog approached development. Co-game director Kurt Margano told me that for the studio, the bar is real life. So putting a prone system into the game meant an enormous amount of work, making sure the movement from running, jumping and standing to prone is fluid, making sure Ellie can do everything while prone that you really would do in life or death situations, like aiming, aiming while crawling and turning onto her back. So the first time an enemy approached me while I was lying on the ground, for instance, I panicked and went to my go-to Last of Us response. I threw a brick in their face and charged him for a melee kill. And it worked. There was no laborious shift from prone to standing and the throw aiming on the ground was just the same as normal. It felt like Naughty Dog in a nutshell, an incredible attention to detail to make the smallest of elements best in category. It might just be lying down, but it's also the best lying down I've ever done in a video game. Number three, enemies are better at fighting you. This is partly because there are new types of enemy, as we'll get onto in a moment, which challenge you in different ways and force you to think about the best way to strategize using your scant resources. But they also seem much sharper, taking advantage of those bigger environments. I found myself getting flanked more than I can remember from The Last of Us, backing into what I thought were safe rooms, only to get shotgun from behind. Number four, more impactfully, the enemies are also more humanized. While taking on the WLF, the Washington Liberation Force, on the outskirts of Seattle, enemy fighters would call out their friends' names as I killed them. Introducing our play session, Naughty Dog's Neil Druckmann explained that as a revenge story, The Last of Us Part Two is about destructive cycles of violence. This tiny touch is a way of jolting players into reflecting on the significance of their actions. What is it? Someone took them out. Number five, related to this, enemies now include dogs. Let's leave aside the gameplay implications of this for a moment and first look at the emotional ones. During the Seattle section of the game, Ellie finds a bow. It's embedded in a clicker and she has to tear it out and it's brilliantly disgusting. It also gives her a way of one-shotting enemies from stealth during combat. Take out a dog and its human handler will stop in horror and check that the dog is okay. And if you kill the human first, the dog is sad and confused as to why its human pal isn't moving anymore. Number six, 
Don't feel too sorry for the dogs, though, as they are tricky as heck to fight. They're small, so they too are hard to see in long grass. They can also smell you, so you can't creep up to stealth melee them. They disrupt your attempts to sneak around offing humans, too. You leave behind a scent trail, which you can see in listen mode, and if a dog is present, you'll need to keep moving or distract them with thrown objects to avoid discovery. It gives what otherwise might be slow and patient stealth sections an anxious urgency and forces you to keep moving. And number seven, there are also new mutations of the clickers. The one I encountered is called a shambler, a big tank-like horror covered in thick growths that act like armor. They're tough to take down, immune to stealth melee attacks, and when they get close, they emit a cloud of acidic fungal nastiness which hovers in place after they've moved on. In the same way dogs force you to keep moving and to keep improvising, shamblers force you to keep your distance, they are extra nasty in enclosed spaces, and also to consider simply running away where possible. It is a totally valid tactic, Neil Druckmann told us so. That's our list of seven things. The Last of Us Part 2 feels like a careful and sophisticated expansion of the urgent, impactful gameplay that defined the original game. And, no surprise, we're very excited to play more of it. Please give this video a like, subscribe to Access for more, and hit that notification bell so you always know when our videos go live. For the players.